So my husband, Ryan, and I, uh, we decided to build our own house when we moved here to Alexandria, Minnesota. We purchased our lot right before COVID, like three days before the whole world shut down. And if you remember, the cost of building materials skyrocketed, uh, doubled in some areas, tripled in others because of supply chain problems. It was a very, very unfortunate time for us to try and build a home. But we decided, you know what, we're just gonna go for it anyway. And so we took a look at our house and we decided what is it that instead of paying people to do, that we would just take on and sort of do ourselves, uh, that we would do some of the labor, a lot of the labor, when it came to building our own house. Now, Ryan, my husband, is very, very handy, and I can be instructed on a good way to do something most of the time. I'm, I wouldn't say that I'm the most handy person, but I can learn and take direction pretty well. And when we looked, uh, we laid out a list of all the tasks of the house, and we decided uh, what we could do and what we would have to pay somebody who was better at it to do for us and when we had to hire a trained professional. We looked at all the things that come into building a home, and we split them into two categories. So clearing the lot. We did that ourselves. I wielded a chainsaw out there and took down some big old trees. The excavation, uh, we hired that one out. Then the foundation was next. And that we knew was really, really important. So we made sure that we hired somebody who was really good at pouring foundation. Because if the foundation wasn't right, everything that went on top of it was going to be an absolute mess. If you live in a home or walk in a building, you know that the foundation is everything. Framing, we hired that out. Ryan did some of it too. Insulation, we did that. I'm an excellent insulation installer, if you needed to know. Uh, plumbing, hired out. Flooring, we did that. And so on and so on for every task of the house. And as the house got built, uh, we like to sit there and say, we built the house. But the truth isn't that we built the house. The house was built by so many people. All these professionals that came in, even our friends and family that came in to paint the house. But the house was built by the excavation crew, the drywallers, the mudders, the electricians, the plumbers. All of those people helped to build the house that we currently live in. Now, in uh, Corinthians, 1 Corinthians chapter 3, the Corinthian church is divided. Now, some want to follow Paul, others want to follow Apollos, and some want to follow uh, Peter. And they've been having this sort of argument here for the last couple of chapters. And Paul is trying to sort of break up the divisions and bring the church together as a whole. And they're arguing about who's best for them to follow, who's best to lead them as they make their way from this tiny little church in this big, complicated city of Corinth. And I mean, I think we sort of get what it means to have those church arguments, don't we? Uh, who should we follow? What sh order should we go in? Who knows the best about how to lead us towards this God? In the 2000 years since this letter was written, we now have 45,000 Christian denominations. We have Catholics, Lutherans, Baptists, all of these different denominations because we've argued over the exact same thing that Paul is writing about in the letter of First Corinthians. So the Corinthian church is looking at its leaders, and honestly, it's given them far too much credit. It's in there saying like, um, no, they didn't actually do all of this work that you're claiming that they did. And so what Paul is doing is sort of backing them off. Paul is reminding them that the church grew from the work of many people, but not even that. The one responsible for the growth had nothing to do with the people at all. The one responsible for the growth was God. It was God who planned for the growth. It was God who used people in order to grow. It was God who did that. We are all just vessels and temples that God gets to do God's work in. You see, Paul maybe built the foundation, Apollos built on top of that, but none of it grew because of their work. It didn't grow because of Peter, Paul, or, or Apollos. It grew because of God's work. You see, I find myself getting really leery of church leaders who say things like, oh, my ministry or my call or my work in this world. Because Paul explicitly in this chapter says, you know, it's not human work. It's God's work through humans. 
the ELCA, the church that Calvary is a part of, actually has this saying that I love. It says, God's work are hands. Jesus Christ is the foundation that God's inviting people to continue the work that God has built upon. So the argument is that the church is divided on who they're supposed to follow. This argument, Paul says, is totally mute. Uh, in the last verse, he says this. He says, so then, no more boasting about human leaders. Whether all things you're, whether it was Paul or Apollos or Cephas or the world or life or death or present things in the future, all are yours. You are of Christ and Christ is of God. That is the one thing that matters. Uh, and that is the foundation on building the church. So here's our questions for today. Number one, um, what's your specific role in building God's church? What's one way that you can take on as part of the task to build God's church together? And number two, in what ways can you build on God's foundation of Jesus in your own life? And maybe share that within the lives of other people. Thanks so much for joining us.